hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to another Pass HEC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover exam questions from the chromosome and inheritance chapter. It will be all of the multiple choice questions from 2010 to 2010, uh, from 2001 to 2010. And what we'll do is we'll cover them one by one. It's about 15 questions all up in this video. I'll read the questions first, then I get paused, and you can pause the video. Once you pause the video, attend the question, and then press play when you're ready again. First question is, hemophilia is a human disease in which the blood of an affected individual does not clot. The disease is known to be caused by a sex-linked recessive allele. Family pedigree shows the patterns of inheritance of this disease in a family. If XH, so that's supposed to be an H, is the allele for hemophilia, hemophilia and XN is the allele for normal clotting, what is the genotype of individual 5? This individual here. A, XH, XH, these are two H's. B, XH, XN, C, XN, XN, or D, XN, Y. You ready? Attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is B. And the reason why is because we know that one of them, if the male, has an XN and a Y. Y because he's male and XN because he's affected. The female that crosses has a XH, XN, right, XH, XN. Because she has is a carrier, does not have a disease, she would have to have both of them being XN if she were the carrier. And we know that number five that is created does not have the disease, but must be obviously a carrier. And we can check that out by using this combination. So we use a Punnett square. We figure out if we have the XN, XH combo, which is pretty much the only possible combo if she were not affected, which she is not. So she is XH, XN. Then an SB. And she is not affected but she is a carrier, and that's her condition. Next question is, the diagram represents one pair of homologous chromosomes during meiosis. Crossing over occurs and random segregation takes place. These are chromosomes, capital A, capital B, capital G, capital A, capital B, capital G, small b, a, b, and g, small a, b, and g, and a key, so this here, this squiggly lines, means crossing over, so crossing over occurs here. What genotypes are produced? And these ones are the ones which are on offer. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is A. The reason why is the first one is ABG. So it will split. This one will split. And it will have ABG. That's the first one. The second one is AB small and then G capital. The reason why is because this part crossed over, so flipped to the other side. So now we have AB from this side instead of AB from this side. So a small b, AB, and then a capital G. That's this one. Next one is AB, so capital AB and small g. reason why is because this part flipped over to the other side, which means we get those two, and we also still have that small g left over. And the last one is ABG, so ABG. So A is correct, and the other ones are wrong. How many sex chromosomes does a normal human female inherit from her mother? 1, 2, 23, or 46. Welcome back. The correct answer is 1. So the mother, mom herself has 2 X chromosomes, so she has 2 sex chromosomes, but she's only going to give one of them. She'll get one from the mom and one from the father. So overall, she'll get one sex chromosome, from the mom, there's 23, she'll give, the mom will give her 23 chromosomes, but only one of them will be a sex chromosome. So A is correct. And the other ones are all wrong. Um, deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, is a double-stranded nucleic acid molecule. For all double strands of DNA, which one of the following statements is true? A, the number of adenine and guanine bases are equal. B, the number of guanine and cytosine bases are equal. C, the number of thiamine and cytosine bases are equal. D, the number of thiamine, guanine, cytosine, and adenine are equal. And ready? Attempt the question. D, 
the welcome back, the correct answer is B, because G always binds with C. A is false, because A does not bind with G. It's A and T binding together. C is false, because T and C don't always bind together. And D is false, because, for example, we could have 20% thiamine, which means that T and A has to be equal, so 20% adenine. But then the last 60% can be between guanine and cytosine. So in that example, we wouldn't have them all being equal. So C, D is false, and B is the only one which is correct. Next one is following birth. Each baby in Australia has a sample of blood taken that is tested for the genetic disease phenylcentronyuria, PKU. This disease affects both genders equally and can be found in babies of parents who do not show the disease. Which of the following best describes the mechanisms of inheritance of phenylcentronyuria? A. Codominance, B. Dominance, C. Recessive, or D. Sex linked. And pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The actual answer for this is recessive. It says it can be found in babies, the parents who do not show it. So if the baby shows it but the parents don't show it, it must be recessive. And it says that both genders have it equally, so therefore it can't be sex-linked. So it can't be dominant, it can't be sex-linked. It's not co-dominant. It has to be recessive, so C is correct. Next one is, the pedigree chart below shows a possible pattern of inheritance for human albinism. Albinism is a condition in which people do not produce pigments in their skin hair and eyes. Which of the following statements is correct? A. People with albinism are homozygous for albinism. B. The gene for normal skin pigmentation is recessive. C. There are two genes that code for albinism. D. Help albinism is sex-linked characteristics. Are you ready to attempt the question? Welcome back. The correct answer is a. D is false. Albinism is not sex-linked. The way we know that is in this cross here, we have two unaffected individuals who have a affected female but a not affected male. That's impossible if we were sex-linked. There are two genes that code for the albinism. Yeah, that's just, that's just generally false. The gene for normal skin pigmentation is recessive. That's also false. And the way we know that is here we have two individuals and they have babies and all of their babies are all normal skin pigment. So this is so this was the normal skin pigmentation. So they're all normal. And that's impossible if normal skin was recessive. So A is correct. Next question. The tortio shell cat has a combination of black and orange fur. The gene for black fur is rep represented by X for capital B and the gene for orange fur is represented by X and O. A tortio shell female cat XBXO made of an orange male cat XOY. Which alternative shows the probable percentage of coat colors in the litter of kittens? A. 50% of tortio shell females and 50% of orange males. B. 50% of orange females and 50% of tortio shell males. Males. C. 25% male, 25% orange females, 25% black males, 25% orange males. Or D, 25% tortoise shells, 25% orange females, 25% black males, 25% orange males. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is D. And the way we know that is because we know we have XBO mating with XO. If we do the actual combination, we have XBXO, which is our tortio shell female. We have XOXO, which is our orange female. We have XBY, which is our black male. And we have XOY, which is our orange male. So it's, each of them is a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, so that's 25% for each. So the other ones were all wrong. Next question is, a, genetic, a geneticist was studying the code color in a hard herd, supposed to be <laughs> Herd of Charlton cattle. She performed the following cross: red coat with white coat. The resulting of the, the results of the cross shown in the table below. We've got the phenotype and the offspring here. So white coat, red coat, red and white coat are roan total. So the offspring had none of them were white or red, and all of them were red and white coat. 
Roan code, code color was the result of which type of inheritance? Codominance, codominant recessive, uh, dominant recessive, heterozygous parents, or hybridization? And when ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The, in this case, it's codominant because we have a red code and a white code, and the result will be R, w, R white, that's a Roan code, and all of them are own codes. So these must be homozygous red and homozygous white coming together and making a mixture between the two, and that only happens in codominance. Not in dominant recessive, that would not be the case, there would be no mixing between colors. Heterozygous parents, again, if they were heterozygous, that would be impossible, they have to be homozygous for that to happen. Hybridization is just unrelated to this idea. So A is correct. Next question, which scientists carried out experiments that led to the development of an understanding of sex linkage? A. Bavari, B. Mendel, C. Morgan, D. Sutton. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The answer for this one is Morgan. Bavari is false and Sutton is false because it has to do with chromosomes, general chromosomes, not with sex linkage. Mendel is false because he has to do with the, the, the just the factors, the early gene hypothesis, as Morgan did the ex experiment that showed sex linkage. Next question, how have Walter Sutton and Theodore Bavari contributed to the understanding of her inheritance? B, by determining the structure of DNA, B, by improving knowledge of sex linkage, B, by demonstrating the effect of environment on phenotype, B, by identifying the importance of chromosomes in inheritance. I should have probably not put this question right after the other one, but yeah, that's just me being stupid. All right, when we're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The answer for this one is they in, did the, they identify the importance of chromosomes and inheritance. That was their achievement. The determining structure of DNA, that was not them. By uh, improving knowledge of sex linkage, that was Morgan. Demonstrate the effect of a phenotype. Again, none of them have done that. So they showed that chromosomes were important when it comes to inheritance. 30% of nucleotide bases in human DNA are adenine. What is the percentage of guanine bases in human DNA? A, 20%, B, 30%, C, 40%, or D, 70%. You already pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer is 20%. And we know that because it says adenine is 30%. That means that thiamine also has to be 30%. So that leaves with a total of 40% being left over. And that has to be split between G and C. So therefore we know that both G has to be 20% and C has to be 20%. So guanine, there's 20% of it. A is correct and the other ones are all false. Next question, the, the gamma plays an important role in sexual reproduction because it carries A, genetic information from both parents, B, half the genetic information from one of the parents, C, all of the genetic information of the parent, D, double the genetic information of the parent. When you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is B. They are diploid, uh, haploid. They have half the genetic information of the parent. So they don't have the full. That's going to be the zygote that is, is produced from the two gametes, but not the gamete itself. All the gametes, so all the information is carried as false, and each gamete only has half of it, and they don't carry double either. So please correct. A rainforest vine, a rainforest vine grows up a tree to reach the top. Near the ground, the leaves are small and oval. At the leaves, uh, at the top, the leaves are large and round. This change in leaf size is an example of variation in the species. B, a commensal relationship. C, a codominant gene relationship. Or D, an environment affecting the phenotype. When you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is D, the environment affecting the genotype. The reason why we know that is because it says the same tree, so the same tree um, has different types of leaves on the top and bottom. So it isn't, within the actual species, within the tree cell itself, there's not going to be any change in the DNA. Every single cell will have the same DNA within one individual 
species member. So A is false. It's nothing to do with co-dominance and has nothing to do with commensalism. The idea of it is that we have um, the bottom ones get less sunlight than the top ones. The top leaves get more sunlight, which means the top ones will have more sunlight to grow, whereas the bottom ones won't have that much. So the, bigger, the, the top ones will be larger than the bottom ones. So therefore D is correct. Because the environment, which is the sunlight in this case, affects the phenotype. What are the components of DNA? A, sugar base and proteins. B, sugar, phosphates and bases. C, phosphates, bases and polypeptides. D, phosphates, proteins and polypeptides. When you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is we have sugar, phosphates, and bases. So B is correct. Proteins are made by DNA indirectly, so they don't aren't part of DNA, so A is false. C is false because polypeptides, again, these are made by our DNA. They aren't part of our DNA. And the polypeptides and proteins are both made by DNA, not part of DNA. So B is the correct answer. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.